progress. I can't believe the lawyer is still on here. with the public laws of 1975, Chapter 231, and adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by a notice sent to the Asbury Park Press, Two River Times, and Star Ledger, and posted in the main lobby of the municipal building and on the municipal website. Proper notice having been given, the municipal clerk is directed to include this statement in the minutes of this meeting. The purpose of this meeting will be to deliberate and act on amendment considerations to the Red Bank Borough Code, Chapter 270, Cannabis, and Chapter 490, Planning and Development Regulations. <clears throat> Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> to the flag, the United States of America, and to the Republic, which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> comment on agenda items only. Please keep your comments to under five minutes. We're going to only allow people to get up once because we have a lot of folks here. So, okay. <laughs> well, welcome to the seating right. Uh, my name is Douglas Byrne. I'm an attorney up in, uh, in Englewood. I represent uh, an entity called Garden of Red Bank LLC. This is a uh, retail cannabis dispensary. <clears throat> Can you just move closer to the mic for the people at home that might be watching the meeting? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Douglas Byrne. I'm an attorney with the firm of Byrne Root LLC in Englewood, New Jersey, uh, representing the Garden at Red Bank LLC. Uh, I'm here uh, this evening to comment on uh, the effect that the ordinance uh, might have on my client. Uh, we're located at 80 Rector Place, also, which is the mailing address for this property. Uh, it's also known as Route 35 at Rector Place. Uh, on all the documentation pertaining to this property, particularly with the Department of Environmental Protection. Um, the Rector Place address is a convenience of uh, the Postal Service, um, but the actual address is Route 35 at Rector Place. Uh, the reason I refer to the DEP is that this property is under a um, an RAO with the Department of Environmental Protection, meaning it's under a cleanup plan. It's a former site, and I'm sure the council's familiar with it. It's a closed Exxon fueling station uh, that had, uh, it's environmentally compromised. Part of the agreement that my client has in acquiring the property is they have to uh, continue the cleanup. There's monitoring going on and extensive um, uh, cleanup and purging of the soil, et cetera. Uh, but nonetheless, my client was, um, uh, uh, going to undertake that. So uh, we did apply to the borough for the cannabis uh, dispensary license. We were successful on November 22nd, thanks to your good offices, November 22nd, uh, 2022, during the pandemic, everything was remote. I remember that well. Uh, your administrator was very helpful. Uh, I spoke to your Attorney, uh, today I was able to reach him, and he was very kindly called me back. Uh, he was away in Florida, uh, and it told me to uh, just uh, send a short email. And I don't know if you've received the email that explains uh, in bare bones the facts here. But I believe that this is an orphan lot. Uh, it's actually part of Route 35. Uh, it, it is uh, set out apart from schools, uh, places of worship, whatever. I do believe it was properly zoned at the outset, and here, because of an accident of the mailing address, it seems to be subsumed into your ordinance this evening, uh, and it's being rendered uh, unusable uh, by my clients after they've invested significant funds 
and who were um, successful in, uh, in accomplishing uh, the licensing here by the borough. So I would ask for your consideration to uh, re-review that ordinance. Um, I, again, I would say we, we have an anomaly we've identified here. The property is set out separately. It's a tainted site. It's also unable to be developed for any residential purposes. That's one of the DEP requirements here. So um, we stepped forward uh, uh, and we presented a plan. We have not yet gone before your planning board, but it requires major site plan approval. We have a plan. Uh, we can accommodate parking. We can deal with traffic. And we can uh, construct a very attractive uh, building that will be an asset to the community and certainly will clean up that a blighted site uh, for the benefit of, uh, of the borough. So my appeal here is to please uh, reconsider uh, the elimination of that lot from your ordinance. I don't think it's uh, properly, uh, um, I don't think it properly belongs there. Uh, if a planner were to look at that, and I don't know what the background is, and I don't want to second guess your process, but I do believe it is uh, an appropriate site for a retail cannabis dispensary. And I do appreciate that the community has stepped forward and uh, you do uh, have an ordinance that um, enables those businesses to uh, uh, to be in the borough of Red Bank. So that's my, that's my uh, pitch, and I would ask you really to scrutinize that carefully. I think that we make a very good case for this particular lot. Every property is unique. That's what they tell us in law school. And it really is true. Um, this is a unique piece of property um, on that roadway. And I think it was recognized by you as an appropriate site for cannabis uh, retail, and it should remain that, that way. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Barnum, before you step away, just a couple of points of clarification. Um, in November of 22, you said you came before? 20, yes, I believe November 22nd, 2022 is our resolution date. Okay, but you weren't granted a license. No licenses have been issued in Red Bank. Well, it's a resolution and it of recites support. license. Of, right, of, of support. Yes. What we're going to try to put in place today is the, or start the process, putting in place a process for uh, applicants to get the actual license. Yes, I, I do understand that. that. Yes. Make that clear. And my second point is, I, I agree with you. Um, I, I think that old Exxon uh, station, which has been blighted for many, many, many years, uh, is, is those types of sites that I believe this council would want to see cannabis in that area and those types of sites. So I agree with you. I, I also spoke to our, our attorney, Mr. Antonelli, who was also kind enough to call me while he was <laughs> on vacation in Florida. And he suggested that while we support your cannabis retailer at that site, that it would be unwise to change this ordinance. You would still have the option to go to this, uh, the zoning board and get a, a variance uh, to, to still have the site there. Or this or future council can always amend the ordinance to do a carve out for that property on Rector Place. When we put streets in, I, I guess we assume that was Riverside Avenue because it's, the, it's, it's Riverside Avenue, that's Highway 35, that turns into, uh, you know, that goes over the bridge into Middletown. So it, it, it doesn't sit on Rector Place, but I guess the address, uh, we, we just didn't, you know, make that connection. And our, our community development director uh, was who uh, shot out the building. He said you, she didn't have to be here, and I wish she was, she was here uh, to answer some questions. But uh, again, you can always apply for a variance through the zoning board. And I, I think this council would support that type of uh, application. Or we can always amend the ordinance at a later date to include that property. Can I respond? So I, I, I certainly appreciate the positive aspect of the of your response. I would just say that you know we um, we have would have a huge undertaking going to the zoning board. I'm certainly familiar with uh, the zoning process. Um, I serve on as attorney for a number of boards. 
Um, my clients have a business decision to make. They're in contract for this property. They've accepted the conditions of the environmental remediation, uh, all sorts of things. And um, we did that with uh, the, the resolution in hand and with the full understanding of, of what we were facing in terms of business prospects and so on. So this is a kind of a curveball that's been uh, thrown to them. And uh, in terms of waiting additional cycles for a zoning um, use variance, which is a steep hill to climb, uh, notwithstanding that your offering the council might, um, you know, might support that. You know, that we don't want to put that in writing, but it's a steep hill to climb to get a D variance, particularly with the fresh ordinance that you are proposing. I just think there's an error, and you might want to take a step back and, and scrutinize it. Uh, yes, can it be amended? Certainly. That's, that's the request uh, today. Um, but just to understand that, you know, that's, you're asking someone who's going to undertake uh, a, what's largely permitted use in the community uh, and going to undertake an environmental cleanup and all that uh, that goes with it, the expense and so on, for a speculative goal, you know, somewhere down the road, um, it's just a tough call. I can't speak for my clients, but it's, it's, it's not what I'm requesting this evening. That's not the optimum for sure. But I appreciate the empathy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> Mayor, uh, council members. First, let me start with a quick introduction. My name is Joshua Cittadino, uh, founder and partner of San Venero and Cittadino, located right down the block on Maple Avenue. Um, my partner and I run a law firm in which we consistently give back to the community every single day. We represent local businesses, local red bank citizens, local taxpayers. Um, we're in contract for our, our business and our law firm for many years to come. And we plan on being uh, a beacon of light in this community for a long time. I'm here on behalf of my clients, G's Trees Cultivation Club. Um, they are a family-owned business. They have been in this community for over four generations. Uh, the reason why they started this business was uh, in honor of their late cousin, Greg T. Hickman, who passed away of childhood cancer on his 16th birthday. Um, they founded multiple nonprofit organizations in which they give back to cancer societies, scholarship programs. And the whole purpose of them starting this cannabis business was to give back to the community in honor of their cousin, Greg T. Hickman. Not only are they uh, also um, in this community, but they all operate businesses in the community. They give back to the community. They have charities. They continue to give scholarship programs to local schools and students. And um, they're pretty much here to, to improve local businesses and to give back to the to Red Bank for, for the future. Now, real quick, I'm, I'm sure you guys are aware, there is a difference between an annual license for the CRC and a conditional license. The conditional license is where an applicant does not have site approval and does not have um, a resolution from the town. My clients not only were able to get both town approval and uh, Site, site control, but they submitted an annual application on December 5th of 2022. They relied on this resolution and they relied on the town approval to move forward and operate a business. Now the difference here is that a conditional license will be awarded to an applicant much quicker than an annual license because of the complexity of the application that goes into the state. On October 13th, my clients entered to a purchase agreement right here to purchase a dilapidated piece of land in Red Bank on, on Catherine Avenue, on Catherine Street, I'm sorry. Um, it's a considerable amount of money, and they've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to move forward in improving that land. It was a broken down warehouse. They're planning on putting up a state-of-the-art facility, which is going to blend with the community and allow them to give considerable amounts of money back to the community and the taxpayers. On September 14th, right here in this room, we received a unanimous vote from the town council um, approving them with the resolution. I have it right here in my hand. And then on November 22nd, our clients obtained zoning approval from Red Bank um, Municipality. 
With these approvals, we are able to submit our final application, an annual application, which is currently in its final stages. Right now, we, we understand that the CRC has looked at our application, has come across their desk. We're in the final stages of approval, and we're hoping to op operate fairly soon. As a cultivator, we plan on building a state-of-the-art facility like, we, like, we, uh, like I just mentioned. This state-of-the-art facility is going to blend with the community. There's not going to be anybody coming and going. Nobody's going to even know that we're there. Only people that work for this company are going to be in this facility. Like I said, no traffic, no issues. All it's going to do is generate hundreds of thousands of dollars for the taxpayers here in this town. This is the difference between our business and many other businesses. All we're looking to do is to give back to the town and to continue with giving back to the town. My business is located in Red Bank. Everybody on my team's business is located in Red Bank. We've been a part of this, uh, this community for years. <clears throat> what I'm looking to do here is to table this ordinance and or to add um, prospective language which would allow my clients to move forward in operating their business. Based on the resolution at the time on November 22nd when we received it, it says the issuance of a license to the applicant to the commission would not exceed any municipal imposed limit. At that time, there was no imposed limit, so we relied to our detriment and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to get this business started. I have a prospective language right here, which I would like to give out to the board, and I shared it with Mr. Antonelli earlier this afternoon. Um, he was away on vacation, which I did not know, so he did not respond to me. But we do have amended language, which we would like to add to this, which would preserve the right of anybody with a prior resolution in which they rely to their detriment. Moving forwards, like I mentioned, we're looking to give back to the community. We don't want to be a detriment to the taxpayers. We want to be a benefit to the taxpayers. So I'm here today pleading with you guys to please give my clients an opportunity to own and operate their business just as they relied on per the resolution of the council members. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you want to approach and give us what you got? Yes, please. <clears throat> So someone online who uh, <coughs> wants to speak. It sounds like there's another. I can't really hear anything you're saying. It sounds like there's another person in the room when you're talking. Oh, can, you, can you hear me now? I'm sorry. I'm actually on a plane on my way back to New Jersey. Uh, I yes, I can, can hear, you, I can hear you now. Wow. <laughs> sorry, but I, I do. I appreciate that. Um, I think it seems the 1,000 foot limitation on the property of schools has been put back into this ordinance. So I appreciate that as it pertains to the charter school and my daughter going. Um, it seems that you guys are still stuck with these three as opposed to the original review, which prevent, just, you know, basically prevented a lot of businesses from listening. And it was kind of a shift in the sense that, you know, there were certain limitations within schools, parks, places of worship, faith, and all that. So it seems that the streets are still staying there. Um, I still don't really understand how these streets were devised. It seems like the people that spoke before me also have concerns with that. Um, I just think we should go back to the original ordinance as I had previously recommended. I know that there was no limitation on licenses, but I think by virtue of the you know, previous restrictions that were in there in terms of where these tenants cannot be in terms of other locations of children and so forth, um, that, that seems sufficient. So um, I just wanted to say, you know, I appreciate that, they, you know, the charter school's been heard, but at the same time, it seems that 
and then everything else gets ignored. But there's clearly a lot more in here than just distances that's covered in this updated ordinance. Well, there's distances, and then you have the map, which is, are the same zones as the original one. No. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. there was no PO before. Right? And the original no, one, no had. residential. If it was the original one, none of these applicants would be here having an issue currently. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the map was wrong from the original ordinance. I mean, that was part of the problem as well. well. Part, part of the problem was that the map was not included in the original ordinance. No, it was. It was. Okay. All right. Hang on. Hang on, guys. Please, please, please. But it was not. Well, it was not adopted. I don't want to take up any more of the public comment time. My apologies, Mayor. Oh, Mr. Heck. Stephen Heck, 135 Branch Avenue. Two very brief process questions. Um, with respect to the review board, um, who appoints the review board? including the council member, and what is the tenure of those appointments? That's my first question. So the, the easy part is, as stated in the ordinance, it's the police chief, the code committee, um, the, the head of code, and Community Development Director yes. would be Shauna. The council would select the council member who so who sits there. The council as a um, as a six member unit. Six, seven, it, it, with the change of government, what, whatever it is. The council would. The would council select. would select one of okay. the sitting council. And members. will that become part of this document? It, it's sure. part of the document now. Is is it here? Yeah. Yes. If we, it is in your yes. Okay, it, no, it I states who's I apologize for uh, no, no, no the worries. time. That, uh, uh, the real quick question is with respect to um, delivery services. Um, they had been um, denied uh, in the older ordinance, and I see that there is in section three, um, cannabis delivery services is permitted. It's not stricken. So, um, can I understand that change? Can can you? Um, I, I will try my best to answer that. Yes. So we, we've had multiple discussions with a lot of different people on this, from both inside Red Bank and outside of Red Bank. We're dealing with the same issue all over the states. And it's my understanding that delivery, as stated in the state statute, is kind of ambiguous. Nobody knows really what that means. Does it mean an Uber Eats type delivery where you call up a retailer and somebody comes and picks it up and delivers it to you? Or is it a full-fledged business with a fleet of trucks that delivers from one business to another? So we're kind of unsure what that is. So we, we try to allow something in the HB zone, which is Newman Springs Road, that would allow for a I guess a fleet of delivery trucks that would deliver from business to business, large scale deliveries. And that's where we thought that would be best housed. Now, as far as retail to customer, I don't think there's anything that would, that we could deny that. Like how, how would we ever stop somebody from calling up, you know, a, a retailer and say, hey, deliver to me, whether you're in Red Bank or not. Thank you, Councilman, that's helpful. Karen Cohen, 829 Orchard Road, Red Bank. I get really nervous speaking in public. I, this is the last thing I want to do right now, so I'm going to read, but my voice is already shaking, so bear with me. Okay, I'm just going to start with who I am. Um, I've been a, I was a Red Bank resident from 1998 to 2019. I gave birth at Riverview Hospital. My daughter just graduated last year from RBR. I also served on the Red Bank Charter School for four years. I met my current husband, we'll meet later, um, <laughs> and we moved to um, 829 Orchard Road, which is the River Plaza section of Middletown, 
0.9 miles, I believe, from where we are right now, um, in 2019. <clears throat> so when we, um, when we got married, which was in 2021, we used the Red Bank River Center's gift card program as our gift reg registry, because we were an older couple, we didn't need the pots and pans and stuff, and we wanted to be able to support the town, especially the restaurants after the pandemic. And you can check, I believe we hold the record for the most River Center gift cards ever received, <laughs> and she'll clip it. <clears throat> Red Bank has been my home for over 20 years. I've been trying to open up a retail uh, cannabis store since we first leased our property October 2021. I know you're all aware of that property. I wrote you about it. Um, the company that I've started is called Canopy Crossroad. We are a woman-owned business, and we are a recipient of a conditional Class 5 retailer micro-license from the state of New Jersey. We are not affiliated, <coughs> excuse me, affiliated or partners with any cannabis business inside or outside New Jersey. That's that MSO you've been hearing about. Or we live down the street. We live here. <coughs> I wanted to take a minute and talk about the state law as it relates to the proposed ordinance. When the state created the law, also known as the CREAM Act, they put social equity at the top of it, meaning social equity businesses, diversely owned businesses, impact zone businesses, and applications receive bonus points and will be afforded priority review, scoring, and approval by the state. Canopy Crossroad is a woman-owned, diversely owned business, and we fit this category and we are a priority applicant as per the state law. In addition to the social equity priority status, the state um, also, we were also given uh, priority because we are a micro business. I know you've heard about micro business, but these are the specifics, <coughs> specifics of it. The micro business was created specifically for New Jersey residents. Um, to qualify, you have to be a, a local person, again, micro, meaning you live in the town or you live in the town adjacent, which we do. We can't be more than 2,500 square feet, so it's not a huge footprint, no more than 10 employees, and the state fees are reduced, again, to promote social equity, um, to $1,000 for our license through the state, not $10,000 as a regular standard license would. Therefore, my business can only open up in Red Bank. I designed the logo with the Red Bank roots in our canopy, um, we are New Jersey residents, um, and we have been put uh, as priority by the law, but the town is not really putting us as priority, which is the fulfillment of what the state intended. I want to speak briefly about the proximities to school. Um, currently, products at the, at the smoke shops, which are very close to the charter school in this case, right on Monmouth, um, sell shops, the shell up products that are not regulated or safe, including Delta 8. They advertise it in their window, you can see it, there's glass paraphernalia, all that kind of stuff. Um, a cannabis business, a licensed cannabis business by the state, we can't have any glass, nothing can be seen from the street. Um, you, it's, it's not the case with these smoke shops, anything can be seen. Um, you have to be 21, you're checked by a security, licensed security person to enter into the establishment. You can walk into any of the smoke shops in town today and purchase. And we also have no need for an armed guard, so that's not an, an issue as far as being in school. Um, you're aware of our, our application. Um, we were the first to apply in town. We are less than 900 feet slightly near the next school, and it is next to a liquor store. So as far as appropriate site, I can't think of anything more appropriate than next to a liquor store that fronts West Front Street. Um, I know you've put a lot of time into this application. The state has already done all of that. Um, please consider cannabis, um, like alcohol, next to a liquor store, again, appropriate. We also have a medical advisory board. We're all about the town. We're from the town. Continuing education programs, and I just appeal to you. Um, we've spent so much time and money, uh, personally, and thank you for your time. Can you just state your address one more time? Eight twenty nine Orchard Road, Red Bank. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, thank you for the time to address the Council regarding proposed changes to uh, the Borough's approval process for pro uh, I'll get to that, sir. Uh, <clears throat> approval process for prospective cannabis retailers. My name is Michael Pop with the Nassau Consulting Group. 
My firm represents Fluoro Red Bank, 54 Northbridge Avenue in Red Bank, uh, an adult use cannabis retail applicant with a resolution of support approved by council. Fluoro Red, Bank, Fluoro Red Bank is comprised of seasoned industry professional partnered with a local Red Bank resident, business and property owner, as well as industry experts with experience <clears throat> owning and operating upwards of 20 uh, retail locations in multiple states and driving millions of dollars in sales and economic development to local and state governments. Now that the borough is considered, <clears throat> considering changing the rules for local approval, we respectfully request a level playing field as Fluoro Red Bank has received a prior resolution of support and secured real property anticipating licensure under the prior structure, which only required a resolution and zoning approval with a state license. The current changes without minor modifications to address gaps in the process may have unintended consequence of limiting highly qualified operators from submitting applications in the city. Our team has identified three key uh, issues we believe would benefit from additional attention by council as you continue to consider revisions. <clears throat> consider affording applicants a time period to obtain the necessary application requirements before granting approvals. Consider reviewing the applicant pool as a whole based on established metrics rather than a first come, first served basis. And please consider <clears throat> the fact that the requirement for a documentary proof of an award of license or a conditional license by the state is an inconsistent standard. A conditional license does not have the same robust review and <clears throat> disclosures that the state uh, at the state level and must be converted into an annual license, which will take months to complete. Applicants with an annual license, uh, with the annual license applications in process, <clears throat> are not conditional license holders, uh, would be disproportionately dis uh, impacted by this requirement, even if they are still minority female or veteran owned businesses. Please consider allowing. Uh, current resolution holders with pending annual license applic applications to show proof of submission to the state. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Bowes, 135 Branch Avenue. I have the shortest question and the smallest sub. I have nothing to say. How did Allen Place get into that? list of um, acceptable streets. Allen Place is truly a, a residential street and we're and on the corner of Allen and um, Riverside there's a, another housing development being built right now. Um, explain that to me. It was added as a substitute for West Street um, and it's in the the uh, business residential uh, zone. Uh, what businesses are on Allen Place? None. Thank you. <laughs> then why is it there? Because it's in a business residential area. Oh, whoa. I'm sure the people who are living there and the people who are on the going to be living there on those in those new apartments that are being built are thrilled to know that they're in the business. I mean, they know they're in the business district. I'm sure. Mr. Bauer does, does, but it doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't compare to any of the other streets. I mean, West Street is obviously more um, commercial than than Allen Place. There's there's a liquor store. There's uh, uh, two or three office buildings. Um, it it just seems to me you have moved from one place. Where there were there are seven eight houses on on West Street there, um, and but there are also five businesses on on West Street, including a garage. No, that's Pearl Street. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, but the, you know there there is a lot of business there, and it, it doesn't make any sense to me. It just seems you have taken it from a semi-business street to an entirely um, residential street. Please reconsider that because I think that that's um, not the, the, the letter of what you're trying to do. I'm 
not sure I understand everything you're trying to do. There was one other thing that I wanted to know. Um, at this point in time, what I did not, this was strictly um, on the uh, locations and the, in the, the land use portion of it. When do you plan on presenting us with the application portion of the, uh, the, the procedure? I, I, I'm not sure I understand your question. Are you talking about when is it going to the planning board? No, no, no. You have to have an app. We, we don't have this, 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 this does not have an app, app the application for you that the, the, that, the, that the people have to fill out. There's, I didn't see it in this particular thing. What is your, what is your process for when you're going to decide with how many licenses? Where is your process? Where can I see it? I have been looking and I have not been able to see it. So the ap actual application has not been developed yet. It can't be developed until we pass this well, resolution because we can't even issue licenses because there's no application process. Well, uh, yeah, I know that. And But the other thing is, I will go back to the, the original statement that Nicole made a while ago. Um, when that particular change was discussed at the council meeting and it was discussed at a council meeting it did it was that you were just going to change that one paragraph thank you i'm leaving four minutes <laughs> Two decades. Just state your name and address, please. Okay, okay, thank you. The last two decades, I've been at 156 West Front Street, <coughs> residence and business. Um, I want to comment on the proposed changes to Red Bank Borough Code 270 Cannabis and 490 Planning and Development Regulations. Yes. Should be used to being in front of the microphone. <laughs> uh, there's a common belief that we're rushing through this ordinance process, which is precisely why we are in the current position. The last ordinance was rushed. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Can can we have your name in that? Again? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't get it. Oh, I Michael Geegan, 156 West Front Street. So rushing the last ordinance resulted in enormous confusion for all involved, and we're back here again seemingly running the same circle. Um, after thoroughly reviewing the proposed changes, there are several tremendous things that the council please must consider before making such sweeping changes. Proposed changes would effectively bar retail uses from being located almost anywhere in town. Have we considered how the proposed changes would affect businesses that have expended significant time and large sums of money in reliance upon the current ordinance? There is already a local business license, licensing function and a state cannabis licensing function. Why are we not creating? Why are we creating separate and redundant processes? process as outlined is not only redundant, uh, it is, is not inclusive and is right for abuse and favoritism. Why is there no map accompanying this ordinance to make it clear to residents and prospective cannabis businesses where they can be located? There was a map before, but not having one now seems to be taking a step backward and is not very transparent. And it is noticed that you have distance restrictions that exclude some zones, especially, specifically the HB zone. This could be misunderstood as spot zoning. And in the license ordinance, uh, it has introduced the need for the licensee to once again meet land use requirements, which is very unclear because they already did so during the land use process. Is the license ordinance also a land use ordinance? And if so, maybe there should be one ordinance and not two. So, in closing, there is a genuine respect for how difficult this process is. Everyone in our community is trying to get it right. It's genuine concern for progress and a lot of money to come back to the township and to education. <coughs> um, but, it's, but in all place, and especially in the middle of an ele election cycle, it seems like a mistake to be rushing through this process again. And instead, can we take a little more time and find a more straightforward way to do this? We've got an incredibly resourceful panel, an incredibly resourceful group of engineers and builders and planners. So <coughs> take some time to get this right for everyone who, who's part of this community and isn't leaving anytime soon. Thank you for your time. Yeah.
I thank you for your, for your comments. Um, this, um, while you think we're rushing through this, this has been going on month after month after month after month since November. Um, or as I think uh, Council President Ballard stated earlier, that the, the zoning board had had an issue with the uh, resolution or the uh, ordinance as it was initially drafted. Um, I have been in touch and I have been out and about the state visiting other municipalities and talking to other uh, cannabis uh, retailers as well as uh, consultants and lobbyists and the like in the last couple of weeks. Um, we're not the only municipality struggling uh, with the way that the ordinance is crafted. Um, it, it uh, you know, as, as many of the lawyers will tell you, it's a new area of law and it is um, really not that cut and dry. Um, I have spoken to uh, folks uh, in this room um, who hope to open businesses um, here in Red Bank. Um, what we're trying to do um, collectively as, a, as, a, as an entire governing body is get it done. We sure. just want to make sure that um, if we can have our licensing process in place and we can identify um, the areas within the borough uh, that, we, that can accommodate uh, businesses, the sooner we get this piece of legislation adopted um, with the planning board's input as well, um, the sooner we can see businesses open it down. And that's um, this entire governing body's objective is to get it done and to get the businesses open. Sure. So thank you. Thank you. May I have permission to speak? Uh, just for the public's clarity, can it just be um, made clear who was on the committee who drafted this legislation? Okay, so Council Randy, Councilman Ballard, and John. Okay, thank you. And our borough engineer, and our borough administrator, and our community development director. I just wanted to be clear which council members were a part of the crafting of this ordinance, and you know, because as I said, I'm not a part of those meetings. I, you know, I just think it's, yeah, it's we, important. We heard you, but the um, the uh, we we were led by our professionals, and 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 we took their advice and their wisdom, and they helped us craft. There was a professional who told you to pick specific parts of streets in Red Bank? No. Thank you. That's a policy decision that the council makes. And Kate, I wasn't included in these meetings either because in a borough form of government, the mayor appoints a chair to each committee, and that committee is made up of less than a quorum, which is three people, which is why these three council members who just identify themselves as members of the kit committee, um, which any other council member, um, wasn't included uh, because, in all fairness, the way that uh, municipal government operates by committee in a borough form of government is what we're doing here tonight. And it's up to this committee to bring it back to the full council, which is why we're all seated tonight in this special meeting. Thank which is you. why I can't wait for the new former government. The new form of government, we have committees. Hello, everyone. Um, hi, my name is uh, Andy Zeitlin. Um, I am the other half of Kennedy Crossroad. Um, live at 829 Orchard Road. Um, and we have a secured property at uh, 9 West Street. Um, we have a, a, a resolution from the town. Um, as my as my wife said, we as, as Karen said, excuse me, um, that uh, we are a women-owned business, certified women-owned business, um, and we put a lot of effort into this. Um, we have a conditional license from the CRC. True, um, it, it is a very efficient process. Um, uh, we we could turn this around once we get um, your support and and planning board's support um, that we could file and. Uh, and shooting to be open by the end of the year, um, you know, with a build-out uh, supply and so forth. Um, I would like to just start with um, my background. Um, um, I um, a am a, a chemist by training. Um, I s uh, founded a company called Celgene, um, that is a, a major oncology company uh, that was bought out by Bristol Myers Squibb in 2019. 
Um, I developed uh, several drugs over the course of my career, including oncology drugs for multiple myeloma that are life-saving drugs. Um, they're also teratogens, so they require a very, very strict distribution system. So my background in, in pharmace pharmaceutical development and in uh, the distribution of specialty drugs being uh, revlimid and thalidomide, two drugs that uh, are lifesavers, but they are also teratogens. Um, so I'm very experienced with dealing with regulated products. Um, th this, this is um, a, a, a totally unique regulated product because um, it's, not, uh, it's not approved through the FDA. It's approved through the state. Um, ultimately, it's approved at the local level. And every town has to decide how they want to balance the needs of an approval um, for, for cannabis that will control it, uh, keep it away, uh, the illicit market away from kids. Um, and God forbid if a, uh, a colorful gummy, um, and some of my background in pharmacy was packaging, um, that a, a, a gummy that's in a colorful uh, kind of a, a, of a packaging is laced with fentanyl um, because that is happening um, from this illicit traffic. So the town really should think about, you know, the the benefit of having uh, retail cannabis in town and and, and 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 providing the service. Look at it as a positive thing. There are people, most people that use it actually are are using it for medical or for what I call uh, self remedy. Um, it, it, it's a really important concept in, in, in our Constitution, um, and so the approval, I think everybody agrees with. I, I don't believe that concerns about distances from schools, uh, particularly a number like a thousand feet, um, are important. In fact, it's a bit arbitrary, it's a bit capricious, and it's a bit unreasonable that that change would be made. Um, I'm somewhat aware, and we, we have uh, legal support, that, that a, uh, uh, a, uh, an application, a date of application rule applies to land use, so that when we applied to uh, the, the planning board, the law as of that date, it stands. So, so there's a, a line of people that are at the planning right now and we're all looking for direction. We all just want to know, please, can we just get this over? There's a lot of money at stake. We've all put a lot of time into it. And can we just res reasonably approach each one of these things? So I suggest that we table, because if you pass this tonight, I, 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 I don't want to be threatening, and I'm trying not to be the bad cop, and my wife was the good cop, and so you know we really are trying hard. But um, it, this, this could result you know, in litigation, and nobody wants to go there. It, sh it could shut down the whole process. You would put a stay on everything, and nobody wants that. It'll, let, it'll go on forever. So please, let, let's just be a little bit uh, collaborative on, on the, the development of, of, the, uh, of, the, res, of the, the ordinance from where it is now, um, starting from the original one, um, adding a little bit of this. Um, I, I think you're almost there. I, I believe that there's one more iteration that you, you, it would be reasonable for everybody. So I, I see my time is coming to a close. I, I really appreciate your time. Um, I, I'm open to discussion with anybody individually to go through some of these things. Um, and, and I really hope we could just all work it out. And, and thank you really much for your time. Mr. Zeitlin, before you go. Thank you for your comments. I always appreciate you speaking on this. <clears throat> So is it your recommendation that collaboration be that retailers be allowed to be within a thousand feet from the school? No, I, I believe the thousand feet number is utterly arbitrary. Um, the, uh, you know, we, we're 880 or something like this um, from, but you know, I would be really careful with this because it becomes a measurement issue. This is, this is, there, there's a lot of, of administrative questions that you're going to get challenged with, that the, the boards are going to get challenged with. Um, with the limited resources you have, you don't want to spend more money uh, to, to, to make this, comp this, this process more complicated. The state explicitly said that they really would recommend that you keep it simple, that they did most of the work, including, by the way, I would, I would submit to you that 
um, they, they provide for funds for inspectors so that we go through, the state uh, verifies all of the parameters that you have in, in your section. Um, the licensing portion. The, the, the section D, correct. The, 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 re, the, the, the application review process uh, re, uh, section. Now, going back to the, the zoning part, the zoning part is obviously you know the big issue. Everybody here uh, thought they had a spot in town. We we do have a spot in town. Um, it was it was it was in it was in the proper zone when the original ordinance was passed in 2019. And the the map, I'm sorry, I don't want to contradict anyone, but the map was definitely attached to the original ordinance. But the at one of the last meetings here. Um, it was distributed, and on the back was that map. So that was what everybody was under the impression that we were trying to do here. And so, um, you know, so making some some changes here and there. It's you know, but it comes down to the elephant in the room. How many do you want? How close do you want them together? And honestly, you know, it's hard to control because you know each one of these processes takes a long time to go through the state and to and to build out and so forth. So. Um, so I, 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 I'm, I'm supportive of a limit. I think you know. I think you can do it. I think it should be done. Um, I, I don't think there's anything arbitrary or capricious about the town saying that. Oh well, why, why, you know, let's we, we had an unlimited number. Let's we're going to cut it down five or four. And you know, it'll take time for these things to get through the process. So it's not going to be all at once. And, and by the way, in California, uh, I want to point out that there are businesses being sold now because it's a mature market. The, the price of cannabis in California has crashed. The businesses have crashed. It's, <laughs> Angela, it's somewhat like the, the cupcake thing. And, and you know, so it, over time, it will <clears throat> balance out. So you're not gonna have 20 or 30 cannabis stores. You're not gonna have long, initially you'll have lines, but they will go down as there's more stores and, it's, and, 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 and more people have access throughout the state. I mean, there is a number actually, there's a standard number uh, nationally, for um, the the number of cannabis stores that are standard per population. So you know the state is shooting for that, and you know each town has the number that they want. You know obviously, but you know it's it, five is not horrible for in in ten, over five or six years you have five. That's not horrible, right? So um, so I, I would consider that, and the and the distance thing, honestly, it is arbitrary. It's good the federal government is not enforcing drug-free zone maps. The, the attorney general has stated it as policy. At the state level, it was legalized with the with this with the Cream Act. So, Andy, we got I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you just just tell me when to shut up. I will go for it. <laughs> yeah. So I thought we were having a conversation. We were. Right. No, it's, we got. It's good, but you tell me when I need to talk to you. I admire your passion. Okay. But Mr. Zeitlin, I just want to respond to one thing that you said, and you raised a great point. Um, one thing that we don't want to see here in Red Bank is, you know, the commoditization of cannabis, the way that you just said it happened in uh, in California, because an issue that's been raised here before is, you know, higher end shops. You know, one of the reasons that we opted to go with fewer licenses is because we want to make sure that the quality of cannabis businesses here in Red Bank do maintain a certain standard. And if it does become a commoditized product, my personal concern, you know, as a as a voting member of this council, is that, you know, it then becomes a cheap product that's you know, you know, readily available. So that's that's my concern in response to an issue you raised. Okay, I, I guess we're having a discussion. So I would just say, I'm sorry, maybe a minute or two, um, that you know, just just as response. Um, but but the the uh, I don't understand commoditization, but I do know that. Um, that that you're going to have a slow equilibrium of adoption, and the more stores you have spread out, you're not going to have lines. Oh, and by the way, I I, I also forgot to mention that um, as a micro, we are limited um, at, to space and numbers of employees, so we can't get you know enormous. We can't have huge lines. Our our whole model is is small boutique. And it's a beautiful, by the way, I have a rendition that's at the planning board. It's beautiful. It's, it, you know, it's, it, it takes that corner of town. It makes it lovely. So, okay, I'm going to say that. I can see it. No, thank you. Thank you. What online? Jessica Ramirez, you have a question. Hi. 
Hi, good evening. I'm Jessica Ramirez for the Lane Avenue. Um, I do not have an opinion on the cannabis law, but I would appreciate if small council members work together without pointing fingers. We are one community and one council. If you cannot be a team player, then maybe you are not fit to be part of the council. I apologize for the comment, but I can no longer sit back and hear this not team player backlash. I hope that we can all work together to come to an agreement with, um, with this law that will benefit the community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more online as well. Scott Rudder. Hi, good evening. My name is Scott Rudder. I am the founder of the New Jersey Cannabis Business Association, the trade association that represents the cannabis community and the growing industry. Um, I've just been listening and, I, and I, I've heard the back and forth. And I've heard the applicants who have come forward to share their concerns. These folks, you know, as, as the councilman mentioned earlier, there's a challenge all throughout the state, town by town, trying to figure out how to go about zoning properly, the number of businesses that they want located within that town. Um, you guys sent your ordinance up last year, and also by way of background, so you know, I'm a former mayor, I served 10 years on local council, I served six years in the state assembly, I went informed the New Jersey Canada Business Association back in 2017, it was for the expansion of the medical program, which then led to the adult use program. So that's my background here. What I'm hearing here tonight, and my concern is, there are several applicants who have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars based on the approval that they received a year ago, last year, uh, 2022, from the Red, Red Bank Council and also from the zoning officer that they used for their application process. The state requires for an annual license that you have all these conditions approved ahead of time. So they, these applicants have all done their due diligence that before the boards received their, their approvals, unanimous approvals, received their letters, and compiled a very expensive application after spending a significant amount of money locally so that they can go through this process and fulfill their dreams. And now, fast forward, here we are in March, and many, many months later, and it appears to me, from my view, that the rug is being pulled out from all of them. And now they all have to go back to the drawing board. And quite frankly, you're setting yourselves up, in my opinion, or potential lawsuit because people went through a process that Red Bank set up for them. They trusted the process. They put their application together, and all these folks are going through the application process. In the ordinance, I, I note that you are going to allow a conditional approval to be one of the qualifiers. I can assure you that a conditional approval is not final approval it's from the state uh, from the state's perspective. It is a, a it is a one step of a two step process. Those who submitted an annual uh, application, these are the folks who have their act together. They put everything together in one solid package, and they submit the entire package to the, the state's uh, Cannabis Regulatory Commission. The folks who submit through a conditional process, they submitted a partial application. They're waiting for the, for the state to go and give them an award for a partial uh, application, an application award, and then they have to go through the process again to go through final approval. In fact, the people who submitted annual application have a faster track to getting final approval from the state. And I think that little language in there um, is a little curious. So one of the things that I would strongly recommend, strongly recommend, and, and some of the applicants mentioned it earlier tonight, strongly recommend that anybody that has uh, their approval from the municipality, the, the, the resolution, the letter from the zoning officer, and a package before the state of New Jersey, the CRC, that those folks be grandfathered in. Otherwise, I would respectfully request that we pause tonight, table this, and have a greater discussion on what the real impact is, so we have the opportunity to generate hundreds of thousands of dollars annually, based on these applicants right here, annually for the state, uh, for the town of Red Bank, or conversely, potential lawsuits which could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to the taxpayers of Red Bank. So respectfully request that you grandfather these folks in for a table tonight, Take a moment and let's get together. This committee that was formed, I'd like to better understand the committee. And maybe you have folks who actually sweat through this process to be part of the committee, allow citizens to be part of the discussion rather than just ram this through tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council Mayor, John Marchetti, Scarlet Reserve Room. 
3 East Front Street. Um, a lot of what I was going to say, the gentleman from Canopy said, so um, the, the couple things that we're confused about is when, when the first ordinance came out, it did have, whether it did or did not have the map attached, there were zones. So we were looking in those zones. Now the, the, the zones have gone and now it's streets that were picked. On those streets, there's no current spaces that are available. So what did we do? We went door to door, trying to take over somebody's business, trying to buy out their lease, trying to do whatever we could do to get into these new streets. There's, there's nothing available. The, what, the area by Welsh Farms was in the zone. Now it's not in the zone. We were asking for our current existing building to be considered in the middle of town. We are dead smack in the middle of town. I know for some reason, some members of the council do not want anything in the middle of town, which I cannot understand. Running a business day to day, Red Bank is a ghost town. So how do you draw people into the middle of the town? By giving some place to go. Cannabis dispensary would do that. For some reason, cannabis is being treated like a redhead stepchild put out on the highways, on Route 35, on Newman Springs. I understand the reason is for it's easy to come in and out, easy accessibility. We don't want traffic in town. That's not how cannabis should be treated. Cannabis should be treated as something to attract people to the town, in the middle of the town. Get them to stop, park, buy, go to shops go to restaurants, and et cetera. At this point, we're beyond frustrated. We thought originally that we were able to get the uh, parks down to 250 feet, like some other small towns have done. That seems not to be the case. Uh, parks and, and workplaces of worship, in my opinion, there should be no <coughs> limit at all. The schools, uh, it's up for debate. I understand both sides of it. Um, I don't think a number should be put on it, but. If you have children in the schools, I understand it. So at this point, we're just beyond frustrated. The other problem um, to address Councilman Jackson, you want, it, you want quality cannabis in town. I think we all do, right? By a, a, the restrictions you're basically putting on with this ordinance, you're basically prohibiting it from mom and pop businesses. What you're allowing is, is businesses, MSOs, to come in who can purchase large pieces of land that may or may not need some kind of cleanup, that may or may not be existing businesses, and the MSOs are gonna have not, no quality in the cannabis. I don't know if, if you're familiar with cannabis, I don't know if you smoke cannabis, but you're, doing the, you're saying one thing and your actions are doing the exact opposite. Now that could be because you're just not knowledgeable, and that's fine, we, you know, if you don't know what you don't know. But from somebody who's in the cannabis business, I'm telling you, you're going to get the exact opposite effect of what you want by letting MSOs in who are going to move thousands and thousands of pounds of bad cannabis versus mom and pop stores who are going to work with local growers, work with minority growers, work with veterans, work with women-owned businesses, cut their own cannabis by hand, and have the quality products. That's right. So I'm not sure what you're trying to attain. I think I know, but what you're, what you're doing is the exact opposite outcome. So all I would say is that we table this just because the first ordinance was passed with a different council. Now this council is here and there's changes being made. And we all know that nothing's gonna get done until the next council comes in. And then there's gonna be more changes. Or as Councilman Ballard said, you, there'll be variances or you can carve things out from that council. So all I'm asking is talk to the cannabis operators and business owners in this town so we can work with you in achieving what you want because I'm pretty sure we want the same thing, but I don't know if you guys have a clear path on getting there. So Mr. Marchetti, I can say that we, we actually do. I know that you believe that we're saying one thing and doing another, but if you've had the opportunity to really scrutinize the cannabis review board that we've put in the other, uh, in the other ordinance, all of the elements that you and another speaker before you mentioned about you know women-owned or minority-owned businesses giving back to the community. I'm sorry. That is prescribed by the state. The state does all this. You don't need to do. It. 
it, it, it's free from them. Why, why are you uh, not? Mayor, we should have yelling from okay. the audience. You're right. So just letting you know that thought <coughs> could go into, you know, uh, into the ordinance to consider what we want and what you say you want. Thank you. Yeah, I think we want the same thing. I'm just hoping we can all get there together because it doesn't seem like that's the way it's going. I mean, we were one, number one or number two to get the LOR from Red Bank. And we're in Red Bank, we have a current operating business. And it just looks like the MSOs are gonna come in, push everybody out. And at the end of the day, the MSOs have the, the, the power and trend and the lawyers to basically do what they want and you guys are gonna have no control over them and you're not gonna be able to, to do anything as opposed to working with local business owners who live and work in this town. So I'll leave it at that. John, I just have one, one, one quick question for you. Do, do you operate in any other municipality? Do we operate businesses? Yeah, uh, cannabis businesses. No. Okay. I, 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 I thought perhaps you could shed a little light on another municipality who had, you know, a, 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 Not currently, a, no. a tight ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. We have one online, and then, uh, and then we'll go to you, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mary Beth, you have the floor. Hi, Mary Beth Nader, 84 Blanche Avenue. Um, I was just paying attention, and uh, I am not a person who's on Facebook, but I've heard a lot of uh, uh, people talking about a woman who was on Facebook and who was actively promoting uh, the candidacy of um, Mayor Portman and Councilman Trigiano and their ticket. And that person apparently uh, works for a company named um, Rivera Marketing, if I'm not mistaken. And that company is owned by, it, again, this is all what I'm being told, of a woman, a woman uh, excuse me, a man named William Rivera and the gentleman who was just speaking. And they own a cannabis uh, business together is my understanding. I, think it's federal, but I could be wrong. I'm just telling you what I have heard. Um, and I was just curious to know if there's any relationship between this Rivera agency that's promoting Facebook posts um, and uh, and our, our council candidates. Just, you know, if, you know, in, in light of uh, transparency and the idea that we should know if uh, someone is providing you with services for your, um, uh, you know, for your campaign, at the same time that they're asking you for consideration on an ordinance. Uh, could, could either of you speak to that? Could you explain to us if there is a relationship and what it might be? And if there's not, why this person in her official role uh, would be promoting your campaign? Sure, Mary Beth. I'll answer that. I think for full transparency, you should mention that you're working on the opposing campaign as a volunteer. Um, I'll state that I have no idea what you're talking about, um, but I will say that people are allowed to be on the internet and support candidates that they believe in. Anybody that sees how we're operating up here, how we handle legislation, how we believe that the ball is being fumbled, maybe they're witnessing that and they're getting on the internet and they're speaking their mind. I got this. This person is in Ottawa. This person is in Ottawa, so it's kind of confusing to me why they would be so intimately involved in actually boosting your posts because you can see when the, boost, when the, when the posts are boosted. I and uh, she's actually about. boosting in her role, if I'm not mistaken, as an employee of this agency. And I'm not here as a, a, a volunteer on a campaign page. Okay. I'm here as a citizen just looking for the transparency that you often talk about championing. I'm um, being as and transparent as possible. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, just one minute. Sure. Just one more minute, please. If, uh, if you can both assure us that there's no relationship between these two people who own, I believe it's called the Scarlet Reserve Room, and um, your campaign in any way, then that's pretty much the beginning and the end of my question. I don't have to hear about how you know balls are being fumbled. I personally am deeply appreciative that the council is standing up. I harken back to something you said at the last meeting about how government has to work quickly. And I could not disagree more. There's a reason why governments are deliberative. Just what, just in the same way that the law is very deliberative, it works slowly. It's to prevent these kinds of situations where something was rammed through under the last borough attorney without any real discussion under the former majority when the new majority came in and they were thrown this uh, funnel, if you will, Kate, 
because the ordinance wasn't written correctly, in my understanding, and zoning kicked it back to the council and said, you have to do these things or we cannot move forward. So in terms of supporting limits to cannabis businesses in our downtown, as a resident, I fully support the idea that we should have a limited amount. I fully support the idea of the council doing its job and actually giving correct direction to the zoning boards that they, in turn, can move forward with these processes. And while I appreciate your great desire to want to pontificate with the Vegas, I'm just asking if you don't have a relationship with them, you can say, no, we don't have a relationship. Somebody posting from Madawan about activities in Red Bank that don't have anything to do with cannabis was the point of my question. And no. actually, Mayor Portman, if you could just answer me, because that's what I prefer. No, we don't have any relationship with them. Unequivocally, that you don't have a relationship, that's all I'm asking for. Unequivocally, we don't have any relationship with them. Okay. I'm not even sure Thank who you're so talking to. Thank you so much for that transparency. I'm finished. You're Thank welcome. You. Good try. Yes. Hello. My name is Reagan Barron, and uh, I'm a resident of Red Bank, uh, not Middletown. I live at 135 Harding Road. Um, I live in Red Bank with my husband, my two kids. They go to the charter school. They're in the zone. Um, lived here for 10 years, and this is my first meeting that I'm attending, so thank you for opening it up to just general concern from um, our standpoint is that I'm really just wondering um, how this benefits the community. Um, like, aside from taxes and maybe you know, jobs, like, what's the real value <laughs> <to> add here <laughs> in, in, for Red Bank? Um, I'm just here to represent the public welfare and the residents. And something that I noticed in this new ordinance is um, just some disparity in the restrictions as far as like locations are concerned. I see it's 500 feet from a park or a daycare center like Mammoth Daycare, um, 200 feet from another cannabis facility, but then only 100 feet from a private youth center like the Boys and Girls Club or a video arcade. So I'm really concerned about the disparities in location, and I would ask that maybe we consider amending the um, ordinance so that it's a little bit more balanced and more in favor of the community. Um, I feel like maybe once a dispensary is in place in a location that that might prohibit something that might really bolster the community, like a swimming pool or, or a video arcade for kids and prohibit them from coming in um, to establish a location there because you know there's a dispensary uh, at that location. So just I really like um, everyone to consider the community. Um, also, as a real estate professional, I'm kind of concerned about smart development in Red Bank um, as far as like the Newman Springs uh, Highway District. Um, you know, I've received comments from clients and developers that I've brought into the area that you know, it looks a little bit seedy coming into town. Um, I'm concerned about, you know, the image. Come down Newman Springs Road, it's gonna be car dealerships, liquor stores, dispensaries. Um, I just, I'm, I'm worried about, you know, how that's going to bring in, you know, future developers and also um, tourists, you know, that um, into, the, into, into the city. Um, I'm also, you know, I've heard a lot of like for-profit um, talk tonight, but I've not heard anything about tangible things that um, people are going to be doing in the community. Usually when a developer comes in, there'll be some kind of compromise. Well, are you going to build a park? Or what are you going to do really to benefit the community? And I've not heard that brought up. Maybe that's um, a larger conversation for the planning board, but I wanted to voice my opinion tonight and, um, you know, put all this into consideration. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, permission to speak? I just wanted to echo, you know, and say that I appreciate you coming to speak. Um, we should always be putting residents first, and I certainly do, always. Um, that being said, it'll be the responsibility of this governing body to make sure that when that revenue rolls, rolls in, that that revenue is handled accordingly and that our residents see the 
actual positive impact of this revenue going towards affordable housing, going towards their parks, going towards programs for their children. So it'll be the responsibility of who is on this dais to make sure that revenue is not just treated like an ATM and it doesn't disappear into the other departments, but to make sure that the residents of this borough feel the positive impact of that revenue. That, that, so you should feel that in your parks getting better. You should feel that in having more affordable housing. You should feel that coming through in the borough when it happens. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Jeanette Viduet, and I live in 280 South Pearl Street in Red Bank. Um, I'm also a parent of kids that attend Red Bank Charter School. I have three kids, actually, that go to Red Bank Charter School. And I'm a little concerned because I did see, you know, the distance of where these, I want to say, dispensaries would be located. And um, somebody else mentioned earlier that we should make it or think about it like, we see a liquor store, we see a, a, a smoke shop or whatever. Honestly, if you guys have seen what these locations actually look like, as small as they think that it might be, they can't really anticipate the amount of people that will be standing outside um, of these places, the lines that our kids will have to see that the near the schools. Um, I kind of... As much as they say that they're not going to advertise it, kids will still see it. The schools will still see it. Parents will still see it. So if we could just, I don't, I honestly don't care. Um, I do know that it's going to benefit military people, um, people that are sick, stuff like that. You know, I'm not against it. I'm just against it being near my kids, being near our kids, where, where you know, I just we put it as far as way, as far away from schools that then they would be perfectly fine but not where um we would have to see um let's say somebody the way um the world is right now somebody wants to go and rob the place and then we have you know cops there or people fighting outside i'm sorry i'm talking um i just don't want that kind of chaos you know in a town that is actually very calm town right now, as much as we have a lot of people moving from the city into Red Bank, I, I want to have Red Bank continue to be that nice, safe place for our kids, where we know that our kids can walk down the street and we'll be safe, you know? I don't think, I'm not saying that it's unsafe, I'm just saying that we don't need our kids to see, to see that. We don't need our kids to be in distance of that. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Rose Cistito, 222 East Bergen. And I stopped coming to council meetings, and most people know why. And I said when I came tonight I wasn't going to talk, but I'm going to. I, first off, I want to say I could care if there were smoke shots or cannabis shots in Red Bank, if they're here or not here, I don't care. What I do care is, I am a second grade teacher. I watch my children every day mimic what I do, and it concerns me to have shots around schools. I sat in the audience, and I sat and I heard somebody say, <coughs> oh, oh, my application, we're a woman-run um, business. Yet a man came up and said he was her partner. Okay? Deceitful. Then, I'm hearing everybody fight about their space. They spent all this money. Their applications weren't approved, I'm sorry. If, in fact, you don't get your shop in an area where our council is trying to protect our youth. And again, Mayor, you need to step up and control the audience because it's not fair for them to say something to people who are here voicing their opinion as taxpayers in Red Bank. I'm sorry, I just Thank I, you. I didn't hear anything. Yeah, well, you haven't heard anything all night, Mayor, no. and it's very discouraging. Right. Secondly, secondly, I listened to this gentleman who was saying that his client was interested in that spot over in... Highway 35. Perfect area. 
perfect area. I listened to this gentleman talk about the end of uh, Kathleen, Street. Kathleen Street. By the way, I know every street in Red Bank. Born and raised over 60 years here. Okay? I know places that you guys don't know. Perfect area. Yeah, there is a little residential over in Catherine, but it's on that little workshop area. Perfect area. Nobody Perfect right there. area. There was one other gentleman, and I, I agree with Barbara Boaz. Unfortunately, the streets were zoned before any of you got here. Unfortunately, somebody may suffer. Hopefully, nobody wants to open a cannabis shop there. But I, there was another person who, who said they wanted a spot. Okay? Eatontown. I drive by that cannabis shop every day in Eatontown. It's on a highway. It's not in a residential area. People go in there, they come out. I work in Asbury Park. I talk to the police every day. There is no cannabis shops as such like that in Asbury Park yet. Eatontown, Neptune. Neptune is four times bigger than Red Bank. I'm exaggerating, maybe. There have three cannabis shops in, in Neptune. Why do we need 50 million cannabis shops? Exaggeration. Why do we need so many shops? Let's get quality shops in here. And you know what? All this, oh, it'll help the community. Oh, we're going to give back to the community. They're in it for a profit. They're not in it to help our community. Let's be real. They might give us a little donation for summer series or a little donation for Pride or, or Juneteenth. But they're in business to make money. Right, yes. They don't care about giving all their money back to the town and building us a swimming pool. Let's face it. Let's be smart. I love the restrictions from schools. Again, children are impressive. The only thing I don't like about the ordinance is I don't understand why a daycare, thank you, a daycare is 500 feet, which is a school, mm -hmm. and a regular school is 1,000 feet. I think we need to consider it and consider where, what the residents want. A lot of these people do not live in Red Bank, let's face it. Uh, River Plaza is not Red Bank. I lived here for 20 years. Okay, 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 guys, 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 please. And again, I lived here 60 years. Oh. That guy, you lived here 20 years. You're gone now. <laughs> and your husband owns your, your, your own business partner. Your husband got up there and said, I'm a right. partner. I'm, uh, you are partners, I'm sorry. And it's not I'm, woman owned. I'm, uh, I'm in. I, hey, guys, quiet, quiet, please. 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 Thank you. Hello. My name is Andrew Deming. I live at 79 Rector Place. I used to live directly across the street from the Red Bank Charter School for, uh, I don't know, 16 years. Can you speak up a little Sorry. bit? Sorry. Uh, my name is Andrew Deming. I live at 79 Rector Place. I used to live directly across the street from the Red Bank Charter School for about 16 years. My daughter was the valedictorian of her class at the Red Bank Charter School. My son is nine and goes there currently. I am been listening to this meeting, I wasn't going to say anything, but I would like to just add that I don't know how many of you have ever visited a cannabis store, but I live near Crates Liquors, and there's people outside asking me for money, smoking cigarettes, like drinking, sitting in the parking lot all the time. The On the Rock Liquor Store on Shrewsbury Avenue, same thing, people loitering outside left and right. The Eiffel Tower Liquor Store by the train station, people outside all the time asking for money, harassing people, saying rude things to you as you go by. If you happen to be a woman, my daughter has been harassed multiple times by the train station. So if you go into a cannabis store, it's either there's a line or there's no line, there's a security, there's cameras, and everybody stands there looking at their cell phone until they go inside, at which point they purchase their cannabis. It's like picking up dry cleaning, and then they leave. That's it. There's no, there, there's no underage people going in the store. There's no loitering outside the store. There's no vagrants. There's no people asking you for money 
or anything like there's no one smoking cannabis outside the store there you know like a liquor store people just go right in and they sit outside and drink liquor and everybody's okay with that as she pointed out earlier there's already a liquor store right where she wants to open the store and the school is okay with that and they're okay with the train station that's the end of the street and they're okay with the other liquor store and they're okay with Jamie and and they're okay with all these places that you can get alcohol which is much more detrimental to society than marijuana and 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 people loiter there it's actually a quality of life issue so i think we should be concerned with this if it's a quality of life issue if there's people loitering outside and you know causing trouble then just like any other store or establishment then something needs to be done but in my experience that is not at all the case with cannabis retail establishments people wait outside in an orderly fashion and as soon as they can make their purchase they make their purchase and then they leave they don't consume anything there they don't bother anybody and they don't cause any trouble so all this won't somebody please think of the children reverend mrs lovejoy stuff like i just really don't understand this because the, 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 there's no issue there's no there's no quality of life issue here so you know, I, I understand the charter school's perspective because my kids go there and the council has demonstrated in the past that they treat the charter school one way and other schools another way. And in this case, everybody is getting all upset because they feel like that is the case. But they are failing to look at the fact that these places are not going to influence the children or hurt them in any way. So their concern, in my humble opinion, is kind of false. So I just wanted to say that. I, I have no concern whether there's a store 800 feet from the charter school or 600 feet or 1,200 feet. I think it's totally arbitrary and it, it, it's up to the establishment to provide a safe environment on its property just like anywhere else, a bar or a liquor store or wherever else. And, and, if, and in my opinion, if you want to look around town for where there are problems, it's in the Wawa parking lot, it's at the train station, and it's outside of liquor stores in general, because there is no security, there is no camera, and you know, people are allowed to loiter there. So I just think maybe you're, you're, you're seeing this as a, a, a community hazard, when in fact it's not, it's just like a, a theater. You know, it's like people waiting outside Count Basie, and then they go in, and then they leave, and that's it. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak during the public comment? I like your hat. Thank you. I like my hat, too. <laughs> Jake Pinelli, Two Sutton Drive, coincidentally Mad One, which keeps coming up tonight for some reason or another. Um, I just have two quick things, actually. Going through the ordinance, I was honestly fucking delightful. I was delighted to see that there were labor peace agreements and collective bargaining agreements in there. That's going to protect the workers of anybody who opens up. That... For the public, if you don't know what a labor peace agreement is, all that is is that's an agreement between the union, the state, and the opening business that they will treat their workers with respect and they will allow them to organize should they choose to join a union. They will not interfere, they will not fire them, they will not any of that. So it's great to see that in the ordinance. As far as all the concerns around giving back to the community, that's actually something you can fit in the ordinance as well, should you so choose. You could always say every business must give, you know, 4% of their gross quarterly whatever to a certified charity that must be presented to the board, of course, a partnership agreement, all of that stuff. That is something you could put in here as well if that's a huge concern. Um, those are my only two things. Thank you guys for your diligence as always. I apologize for cursing. That just kind of came out. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. We have one more online as well. Two more online. Alexander Keenan, you have the floor. Hi, so Alexander Keenan, 35 Glenmary Avenue is my address. I have a bit of an off-topic question. So I'm a local community college student, 20 years old. I've been born and raised in Red Bank basically my whole life, born at Riverview. 
Thank you. 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 Thank
Hey, Jeffrey, before you step away, I just wanted to thank you. I know you have been sitting in the back corner of the room at every meeting that we've had for the last several months. Um, and, I, you know, and I do uh, appreciate your support, um, yeah, as you hold up your sign, um, for cannabis. Um, what we are trying to accomplish is to get something passed. And whatever we introduce um, isn't going to be perfect. It's not going to satisfy everybody in the room. But um, I think what this uh, governing body has done is spent the last several months listening to everybody uh, time and time again, go through um, the pros and the cons and, um, you know, and, and the residents' concerns for, for our children and um, the distances from schools and houses of worship, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I, I guess in, in a nutshell, um, even if we introduce something, it still continues to need, need to be worked on um, before we get it as close to perfect that the entire governing body can agree on. So thank you again. Thank you. We have one more online. Chris Hannigan, you have a Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. This is Mandy Hannigan. Actually, I have Chris here next to me. We live at um, 66 Oakland Street. Um, I just wanted to sort of echo what Mr. Deming had said in terms of um, liquor stores being compared to cannabis stores. Um, I, I also wanted to say, sorry, I didn't expect to talk tonight, so I'm a little nervous. But um, thank you to the council members that responded to me and the mayor uh, to my email. I had, you know, my daughter attends the charter school and it did seem like we were the one school being left out initially for the distance concerns. Um, so thank you for sort of coming to the table and hearing us. Um, you know, in terms of the person that wants to open a store down that's next to a liquor store right now, I, I don't see the problem with that. Um, and I do think that we need to consider all the, you know, effort and money spent and, you know, perhaps table this right now or grandfather these people in. Um, and I, just another big point I wanted to make is that we need, you know, this is forcing the issue to be discussed with our young children. And I think that <coughs> continued education on the harms of marijuana, you know, we need to be discussing that in schools and at home. And also, you know, there are positives to it, right? But we, I, you know, I drove down the road from on Route 35 all the way from Eatontown behind a car that was smoking marijuana, and I'm in the car with my daughter, and you can smell it. And you know, that's not okay. If you feel different, you drive different. So let's also remember, as we bring or try and bring more businesses like this to Red Bank, we need to be mindful in educating our children and saying, like, smoking is not good for you. You know, just keeping that education piece to, in the forefront because it's really going to be more in our face now. Um, so that's really all I have to say. I, I think we still need to keep working together and, and make this happen in the best way. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mandy. Anyone else? Yeah, we have another one online. Jesus. Satiba Cross, you have before. Good evening, Council. This is uh, Edward Grimes. I'm with SatibaCross.org. We're a 501c3 here in New Jersey advocating for disability access and for cannabis patients' rights. I want to thank you for having this meeting available to people uh, at home in their wheelchairs and on their beds because many people are sick and cannot attend these meetings, like myself. I'm, uh, I'm disabled and it's, uh, it makes it easy for me to take part remotely. And I think more towns should do this, that actually follow the ADA Title II. So I appreciate that, so thank you. I believe um, one thing that towns are doing, that they should be doing with the cannabis money, is wheelchair accessibility in a lot of the, uh, the town areas. Red Bank has a few streets where the businesses have very poor wheelchair access. And it's only one or two steps, but a step is a wall to somebody in a wheelchair. And what many towns are doing 
is when they redo the sidewalks, they're making all the businesses uh, accessible by just raising the, the sidewalk a little bit when they redo them. So that's something I would hope Great Bank would think about when they get this kind of this money. And they should get it soon, sooner than later, because you know people in wheelchairs can't really wait. You know, uh, they're suffering, they're, they're hurting. We need all the help we can get. And uh, the quicker you can get people into the businesses that you have you know, access to, the better. Uh, we donate ramps to businesses, and uh, we'll probably donate a ramp to some business in Red Bank, but we'd like the town to subsidize ramps in, uh, in Red Bank and, uh, and help these businesses uh, to get access and don't put all the pressure on them. Uh, take some of the uh, pressure off these businesses. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Um, thank you to the gentleman for uh, pointing out the advantage of hybrid uh, meetings here for Red Bank Council. A very big thank you to Councilwoman Sturgeon <coughs> for actually making that possible. She was the one who actually um, uh, brought that to fruition, so thank you. Good evening, Council, Mayor. My name is Greg Land. I'm a resident of 16 Alexander Drive, River Plaza. Middletown. I think there's <clears throat> a big misconception with how cannabis is being viewed by not only our society, but I think more important, Red Bank. With the recent regulations approving cannabis to be sold legally in not only medicinal purposes, but for recreational purposes, you no longer can hold it to a different standard. It can't be viewed upon as the devil's tea as it was once years ago being used medicinally and now being able to be sold recreationally legally should put us on the same footing as a liquor store. The regulations, the laws, the distances from schools and so forth should be on common footing. With regards to giving back, I don't know if the um, crowd does or doesn't know, but part of the taxation that we as um, establishments provide is 2% of revenue. So whatever our revenue is, we are donating or giving money back to the town. In addition, I am part of a sustainability company. And one of our initiatives is cannabis. So we are looking for ways to make the industry from the retail and manufacturing side more sustainable to be able to again, donate monies back to the town, provide different opportunities for sustainability issues to be certified. So again, we're looking to do things different than some of the big box stores. We are locals who look to put a local flavor in Red Bank. And we just, again, we want your consideration in the effort that we're putting forth as well as the time and the energy. And we appreciate, again, what you're doing in this uncharted territory. So on behalf of me and my partners, female-owned business, we appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you. Anyone else for the public comment? <laughs> you, 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 you're maxed out, sir. I know. <laughs> Anyone else have a public comment? No? Right. Motion to close the public. Can I have a motion to close the public comment? So moved. I have a second? All in favor? Aye. All right, council, let's discuss. Um, so I would like to uh, suggest uh, an adjustment to the streets or addresses that we have um, to include a rector um, in the ordinance because when we originally you know, chose those streets and et cetera, we clearly intended for that area to be included uh, for the reasons that we did, which is accessibility, minimal impact on traffic, and I think that that property location falls in line with what we had originally intended to designate as areas for this business. Mayor, if I may, um, I just, I, I agree with John. I think um, up until tonight, I had uh, no idea that uh, 80 Rector and Riverside and 35 didn't have the same address. So um, I would, uh, uh, also like to make an adjustment. Um, I know this is on for introduction tonight, um, but if we have to um, go back and make a modification or a correction, I, I, I guess maybe Jack uh, could shed some light on that for us. 
I think it would depend on whether this is uh, the, the type of change that this is, um, whether it's a minor change or not. Um, but we can take a look at that. Would you be able to provide that information tonight as the borough attorney if that's a minor change or not? Um, I, I would get back to the board on that. We'll take a look at it and get back to the board. Jack, it's Darren. If, if we make that change before introduction, would that make a difference as opposed to making it after introduction? It hasn't actually been introduced yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right, Chief. Um, if it hasn't been introduced, then we can make that change. So we can make that change and then <coughs> introduce if that's what the council wants to do tonight. Exactly, yes, okay. that's what the council wants to do. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a reason, what was the, the reasoning that the, um, I'll call it the Welsh Farms property, for lack of a better word, on the east side over by the hospital, is there a reason that was removed from the, um, the original, it was originally permitted and then it kind of, it got cut out during this ordinance. Sean has said it was an oversight. I'm wondering if there was another um, reason that property is not being included. I think that property now holds it within the 500 feet of the church. So that's why it was. There's also a daycare center, I, my understanding, over in the hospital area that would have prevented it. So we, we did consider it. We absolutely did. Um, and someone brought this up before. Is there a map included in this introduced ordinance? Well, I think a map was just mailed out late this afternoon. Hmm. So, no, it was emailed out by Sean. But it's I don't know if it went to the whole council or not. I know I just got it late this afternoon. So, I, didn't, I, I, I haven't seen it either. That, right. that was no. left to our um, borough engineer to put that together. I don't make maps, I don't draw maps, uh, and that's what we pay him to do, and I haven't seen it either. I know he was working on it. Are you comfortable introducing this ordinance without a map attached? I am. <clears throat> I'm a little, I'm a, I know there was so much confusion initially with, with the map in particular, I'm afraid that we're, uh, we're setting ourselves up for the same confusion by not including uh, the visual of the map in the ordinance. Well, I think, Mayor, if I may, um, because this um, particular ordinance is, is more uh, geographically specific um, by uh, uh, naming uh, the streets and areas um, between streets, uh, it's a lot more specific than what we originally introduced. Um, and, and Darren, can you clarify on the first ordinance, was the map included or was it not? That's, that's a very good question. I know it was referenced many times on some copies. I've seen it included on, as somebody mentioned tonight, on printed copies, I've seen it there. And on electronic copies, I haven't. So I, I couldn't say definitively as we said here. It's somewhat ambiguous. The, the map, just for the record, for those people who didn't get it on council, it was an exclusionary map. So it showed, it showed today, the map that went out today from Shauna um, showed um, where the, the 500 foot distances are, the 1,000 foot distances. It didn't highlight the streets that are being included. It just showed where it would be excluded because of the distances, the 500 feet from the churches, 1,000 feet from the school, and so on. And I would say just because it just came out that that needs to be validated because we don't want to have the same issue that we had with the first step ordinance in 21 where it wasn't right. So um, to Councilman Zipperidge's point, we, we have the specifics in here unlike that ordinance. So the, the map is more of a nice to have. It's something that the borough needs anyway. It needed to have an updated map of, of all the school locations and parks and so forth. Is there any, um, 
do you have all the the, uh, the sections of distances from you know school, youth center, swimming pool, and then it lists streets specifically. Is there any um, conflict between those two? In other words, with the streets you list, do any of the addresses that might be on those streets are they superseded by the fact that they now have to be a thousand feet from a school, for example? Not to my knowledge, and again, we went over this with a fine tooth comb, with Shauna, with our engineer, with our attorney, um, and that is one of the reasons why you know, uh, Canopy Crossroads, who was here tonight, who had a spot on West Street, that West Street is now removed because when we, when we had West Street in and we found out that it was in a thousand feet of, of the charter school, we said, well, then we have to exclude it. It, it, it can't be both. So, so we're, like for example, you have, you know, Bridge Avenue between Riverside Avenue and Mama Street. We're sure that that, because I feel like that was in the original, not the original, that same address was in the amended ordinance and that feels like specifically the area where the charter school parents were upset that it was falling within a thousand feet. No, that was West Street. That was just West Street? Okay, it wasn't up on bridge. Okay. Mayor, Mayor, just to be clear, I'm looking at the map as we're speaking, and there are, it looks like, two properties on Bridge Avenue that do fall in the excluded zone that are north of Mama Street. If that answers your question. So, that fall, that are that fall within the excluded zone. Right. Um, okay, it looks so they like are within a thousand feet. It looks like it's within a thousand feet of this charter school, right? Two properties, two, uh, possibly three properties, since it's small. Okay. It it, but it goes through each property. Um, right. What are those properties? Well, I'm looking at ta a tax map, so it's a little tough to tell, but it's basically, I believe, it's the old. Myself. I believe it's the old saddle shop, the brick building just north of the train tracks there on the right hand side on the what would be the east side of the street. And the yeah, shop. Shop. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then it looks like part of a lot that probably is the Two River Theater property now, that the Two River Theater now covers several lots that used to be individual lots. It looks like one of those lots. And maybe the corner of a third lot also the Two River Theater. Um, just a few, I just have a few concerns here. I mean, I know you said you went through this with the professionals with a fine tooth comb, but um, we already had the property on um, 80 Rector that no one was aware of. Was we, we thought it was fronting on Riverside. Now we have a couple properties on Bridge that are also falling within the thousand feet. I think that if the map was available two days ago, you would have attached it to the ordinance. So um, I can understand if uh, someone viewing this process feels like it's it's rushed a bit. Um, I know it's been going on a long time, but I mean, as we're going through this, that's just several mistakes or conflicts that are going to need to be um, corrected. So. Oh, Mayor, I'll just I'll, I'll just remind you that this is this is for introduction. If if there are corrections that that need to be made to it, um, those those corrections can can be made, and that you know that map needs to be amended to it. That too can can be done before it's um, adopted. Okay, I just want to clarify because Michael said when someone spoke earlier that I think it was the uh, about a rector. He said. Um, the attorney advised us not to make those changes, and that was why we had the conversation about you can get a variance at the zoning board or we can amend it after it's passed. So I feel like you can I get some clarification because you each sound like you're saying something different. Well, I think from what Ms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From what, what, what uh, Mr. Burke just um, told us, that since this is on for introduction, we can make that correction. I think the chief also pointed, pointed that out um, because, unbeknownst to me, I didn't realize that. Uh, rector at, at Route 35 um, wasn't part of that Riverside Avenue uh, uh, bend, so I'm, I'm okay um, making that modification to include um, rector at Route 35, I think is the way that the potential property owner described. Um, one other question, um, 
I know the original thousand feet was introduced. I think it was it's the state law or federal law about drugs within a school. Is that what's that? Well, it, it's a drug free school zone from the Fed. From the Fed. Okay, so I'm sure that's where that that number came from. Um, I'm just curious where the rest of these distances came from that are in the ordinance now. How we came up with those numbers. Mr. Mayor, I provided a color-coded map for you guys with the drug-free zone earlier. Page three. <clears throat> That's it. So those are also the federal, so the, the federal provides the... The red-out areas? Of no, the no, I, yeah, I understand. No, I'm just curious about the, the, the distances. 1,000 feet from school, 500 from parks, house of worship, daycare, 100 feet of public or private youth center, swimming pools, or video arcade. 250 foot radius from any retail cannabis business. That last one is certainly not part of the federal. No, uh, uh, it was also looking at other towns' ordinances and also what would be reasonable within Red Bank and what we were hearing from the parents and the residents as far as not what. So you have the state, which had the drug free zone, right, for the schools. But nobody wants it next to a house of worship, right? Nobody wants it next to a park. So there's other. So that's where these the other recommendations came from. So. So I mean, the state was just the, the drug free school zone. Right. Right. But then, did, I don't. Did you guys look around and be like, nobody wants this next to a house of worship? Is that kind of? I mean, I don't think that I. I I'm. Look, I liked your first answer about we looked at other municipalities, but I'm a little. I'm a little more concerned with. Uh, I mean, come on, nobody wants well, this. Well, well, that's. Oh, yeah. Are you okay with it? So are you all right with the it, Mayor? You're yes. You're okay well, I don't think. I, I think there's a difference between 500 feet and it's next to. It's not up to you to decide. Right? I'm a little concerned with what you're. I, I have no problem putting in distances. I want to know how we got these distances. The and, and how would you come up with those? I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not on the committee. Wait, no, then, right. no, this is your personal opinion. It has nothing to do with being on the committee. You said you're okay with distances, but these distances aren't good. So what distances do you want to stay? No, first of all, I didn't say they weren't good. I'm a little concerned that they were arbitrary. I just wanted to know how I'm not, those distances I don't know how arbitrary, were Mayor. I mean, everybody on council, whether they were part of the committee or not, had plenty of time to do their own investigation, research, talk to the public, talk to the residents, and come up with recommendations that they could have made at many, many previous council meetings. And we heard nothing. So you just picked arbitrarily? No, they're not hey arbitrary. Guys, and hey, it's guys, we, we, we're just, please, it's, it, you're delaying things if you're, if you're adding commentary. So. Um, so, so what are your distances and how are you going to come up with them? Um, You know, I, it's a little tricky because, for example, if we're discussing a specific property we we're talking about on West Street, right? It's next to a liquor store. Um, it's within a thousand feet of a public school, specifically the charter school. Um, but I also don't, I think that's an appropriate location. Um, so I'm not quite sure if distances is the solution or whether it's uh, specific zones. Um, to me, this is the first I'm seeing these numbers. So again, that's why I was saying um, this combined with the other mistakes that we found. Um, I'm just thinking that maybe this wasn't as carefully thought through as uh, you intended to. I'm not denying that you put a lot of time into it. I mean, you clearly, it's, you know, you, you put time into, but um, I'm just not sure it's quite ready to be introduced. So I'll ask you again, Mayor. Right. What, are, what are your distances, if any, and how did you arrive at those distances? Yeah, again, I haven't, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this for the first time, so it's not like I came in with a prepared um, um, formula for distances, but I'm more than happy to continue to discuss it. Um, again, some of these are being introduced for the first time, so um, the only one I really, we talked about before was the thousand feet one, the 500 feet from parks, and we talked about the, the distance from another retail cannabis business. Um, this is the first time seeing 100 feet from public or private use center swimming pool or video arcade facility. 
May I have permission to speak? Yeah. Can one of the council people on the day as who has the map that was sent to them by the community development director provide me with that map while I'm sitting here? I don't have it in my email. Um, I'd like to see a paper. Can I just like borrow it really quick from one of you? I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have it printed out. I have it, but not printed out. I can print it. I, I, I was going to mention it as time. There are other conflicts with the map as I'm going through the list and looking at the map side by side. So, can you enumerate some of the other So, on, on West Front Street, the ordinance permits um, between Shrewsbury Avenue and Pearl Street, but some of that between West Street and Pearl Street is within a thousand feet of the school zone. Um, and also the highway business district Newman Springs Road is partially part of that stretch is also I think that might have had a that was excluded that, that might have had specifically exclusion. Exclusion. elsewhere yeah, I saw that oh you're right yes. yeah okay. but the one on front street appears to be in the school zone from um, from approximately West Street going to Pearl Street I'm still asking if I could just see it anyway so, so those those properties that would fall within would be excluded so that's constricting further, is what you're saying? Well, restricting part of those areas. The thousand feet didn't change from the first one, just to be clear. No, right? but now so, you're naming specific parts of streets, which but, constricts further these, on top of the thousand feet. The, these streets, if you look at the old map and these streets, these are streets within the old map. The only difference is it starts at Monmouth as opposed to Oakland. Right? How many people here, raise your hands, fit into the old map and were a thousand feet away from a school? Oh, no. We qualify okay. regardless. So now that's the difference. Now we're talking about specific streets, specific yeah. pieces of streets, the 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 but they were all a thousand feet away. Yeah. Yeah. No, which street? Well, whatever street they said. They're, they're good on both maps. Yeah. Still looking for a change. So then I guess you would need to identify specific addresses to be able to amend the ones that are. Um, are you, so are, are you going to have language that says the thousand feet overrules the overlaps on other streets that are within that zone? Like we were talking about um, Bridge Avenue, for example, the chief pointed out. Right, so if those properties happen to fall within the thousand, then they would be excluded unless they went to zone. Right, is that, is that, is there language that has to clarify that in the ordinance? No? No. I have. Oh, one, uh, one other question too, I'm sorry, one other one. I think um, we should maybe consider removing having a council person on the cannabis review board. Um, I saw an original one that had a council person and a mayor and then it was reduced to a council person, but um, it seems that maybe that should be a decision um, that is just left to the professionals for final approval. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up there because I had a conversation with um, with some folks um, who have been, been through the same exercise, um, including folks in Jersey City, um, where when they described what the makeup of their uh, review boards were, it always included a member of council um, to be the liaison to the full mayor and council. Um, and that was and that was something that they felt was uh, critically important um, in order to make the, uh, the, the the municipal review board um, uh, uh, subject to the mayor and council's um, review um, and um, having the department officials um, who oversee the areas of law enforcement, code enforcement, and um, and planning and zoning. I think you want a public representative on that board. I mean, in absence of that 
review board, it would have been going in front of the full governing body. Is that correct? <laughs> Yes. It, okay. it, it would have, but but this takes the, the, the politics out of it, if you will, um, because what it does is it removes the governing body from um, what all of the machinations that we've been through, um, and it includes law enforcement, code enforcement, and planning and zoning, along with the liaison from from the governing body, which sort of balances the equation. Because then you get a then you get the professional uh, input uh, that you need, and you remove it from the political side of um, of the discussion. Permission to speak. I, I could just I could see that as one interpretation of that function. I mean, this isn't my biggest issue with this ordinance, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. But saying that having one public servant as full of full does not take the politics out of something. I mean, that person is still coming back, speaking to the governing body. So I, I just, you know, um, once again, I would hope that that application process, once it's at that point, you know, if the person shows that they've satisfied their bullet points, that there would be, you know, no need um, for any, you know, involvement of that nature. But uh, it's still having one elected official on there um, and who they talk to and what they do. But like I said, that's not even my biggest concern with the ordinance. Um, I cannot support this ordinance. When I asked Councilman Ballard meetings ago, I asked, would you be spot zoning? You said no, and now I'm looking at specific parts of specific streets, um, and I wonder um, what residents were in mind when you were choosing uh, these streets and making your policy decision. Um, I do have a concern about pushing out small mom and pops, which was stated tonight. I believe Red Bank residents care about local small business. Um, and I do understand what you're talking about, about quality of product versus MSOs and the issues that are going on around the state with the quality of that product um, not being the same. I know that. Um, you know, I just, I don't know what residents were in mind in taking that. I believe our residents care about social equity. I believe they would want to support female-owned small businesses. Um, I was happy to hear that you're open to um, the rec to replace one and changing that before introduction. I'm very happy to hear that because that's the type of positive things we want to see come out of the support for things like this and you know environmental radiation, things of that nature, the location, great. Um, but I, I cannot support specific streets, small pieces of streets, the spot zoning involved um, on this. And I just want to say, you know, I speak with a lot of residents and 70% of our residents voted to legalize, 70%. Um, I have a kid, my kid's gonna be nine, he goes to the public school. I have those conversations with him in my home about don't trust anything and any happy packaging. You know, These are conversations everybody needs to have, but I also wanna to say to anybody who's gonna be opening a business in our town, and I already see that you know that. You're all sitting here shaking your head like, yes, we know this is our responsibility. It is going to be your responsibility to create those connections in our community to make sure that that education is happening. And I know that you'd want the same thing for your kids. Um, you know, so I, I do understand that. Um, but it's just simple. I can't, I can't support the, the spot zoning. I, I don't think it's um, right. Um, so just based on that, I know you're going to move forward, but I just want to share my piece. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Mayor, if I may. Um, I attended a uh, seminar that was uh, uh, presented by the, uh, uh, I'm trying to not call them freeholders, but the, uh, um, the, the county commission, commissioners from Passaic County, um, along with uh, Shauna Ebanks uh, the other day, and um, they provided us with a, uh, a PowerPoint pres presentation one of which um, included the uh, cannabis ordinance checklist. And one of the um, items on the checklist is location restrictions. Um, and uh, it says a certain distance from daycare, preschool, schools, colleges, university, boards of education, houses of worship, drug and alcohol treatment centers, public park, library, uh, public building, residential uh, zones, redevelopment zones, etc. cetera. Um, and a certain distance from other cannabis businesses, um, and, and then it talks about how you uh, explain exactly how to measure those distances, uh, whether it's walking from door to door or whether you have a survey uh, surveyor come in and, and geographically determine those uh, distances. And then, um, it, of course, once, once you get through all of that, then the inspections are done by the, the town clerk, the town health official, zoning official, police and fire department, et cetera. And then it goes on to address uh, 
odor noise compliance with state and local ordinances, and then uh, and any violations of ordinances for licenses <laughs> and persons responsible for gifting, prohibition of unregulated sale, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, th I think based on what I read in, in what the committee has uh, put forward, a, a lot of those items on, on the checklist have been, been addressed. Um, and as I, I mentioned earlier uh, this evening in, in conversation um, w with my colleagues here on the dais, um, this is on for introduction. Um, and for all of the years that I have served, um, ordinances that are introduced um, and then need to be reworked or retooled um, can be done so before they are adopted. So um, on that note, I will make a motion to introduce um, this uh, ordinance, um, and we'll continue to work on it collaboratively. Is that with left or place? I mean, that's how's that going to work? Well, I'm, 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 let's take take a step back. There are two separate amendments, so I think we have to take them one by one. Okay. That's mayor. We need to have. Sorry, Ballard, I, Michael. I just wanted to say what you're saying. We need a confirmation from the attorney, right? Whether or not those can be made, or. Uh, oh, sorry, if it hasn't been introduced yet, then we can definitely make changes. Okay, so okay. I didn't introduce, just kidding. Just to be clear, so are you uh, looking to introduce both ordinances without making the changes that you talked about, the address changes? Do you want to do them um, after the fact, or do you want to introduce them as they are? Or you want to make the changes first, and then introduce the ordinances with the changes? It's a public meeting. There's a lot of talking going on. I'm just trying to clarify the order of how it happens so it's done um, properly. Um, My recommendation, Mayor, is that since we have this in writing and this has been provided to the public in writing, um, my recommendation, even though this has not been introduced as yet, I think you should do, again, Jack, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you should make a, uh, a motion to make the amendment to the draft for introduction and get that passed prior to before you introduce the... Um, First, the making a, a, a motion to amend. Okay. So it's... I, I agree with that, yes. Okay. <laughs> so you want to provide me with a specific... Written, I mean, am I just, you know? Mm -hmm. Councilman it? Ballard, whoever's introducing would, for the amendment would state it. Right. So let me know what amendment you would like me to make, and I'm happy to, to ask for it.
can't can you just say eight eighty rector place? Isn't can we just do that? No, I, it's so, Angela, to, to that point, I'm not sure whether it should say uh, Riverside Avenue between Bridge uh, right. and Pearl or whether it should say, you know, the, the, the southerly boundary of uh, Route 35. If I may, Councilman, the place is not Route 35, so you wouldn't be covering that property. Even though it's on the corner, as the gentleman pointed out, it's actually 80 Rector Place, which is not part of Highway 35. It just happens to, the property line just happens to be on Route 35 on one side. So my suggestion is adding an additional line of 80 Rector Place specifically mentioned. Well, that, then just, just that, and, and Jack, maybe you can shed some light on this. I mean, if, if we were to identify a property address, does that then get us into a spot zoning um, situation? <laughs> I think because we haven't done that in any of the other areas, we probably want to try to include it in the street names rather than specifically identifying the address. So we need to, uh, I'm just trying to understand that, Jack. So we would need to identify it by street name? Is that what you said? Yeah, either I guess it's Riverside Avenue is the portion, so we can change that to um, well, so that include the beginning of Rector Place. So it's a, it's a giant intersection. There's one, two, three, actually four roads that intersect there. So maybe maybe we need to clarify this a little further. Um, from a legal standpoint, and I'll and, and, and I'll walk that portion back then. Error on the side of caution, Jack. I apologize. I said, should I err on the side of caution? Uh, yeah, I, I would do that. Just to clarify, what do you mean when you're saying you're walking the amendment back? Mike. Right. I'm sorry. Um, what I stated earlier about including um, 80 Rector, um, I, I'll, I'll carve that out and take, take it. Really good. Okay, so you're going to, so then you're going to introduce the amendment as is? I think that's the safest thing to do. So, you know, based on council's recommendation, that we don't get into a uh, in, into a legal situation by um, identifying it specifically by address. Okay, I'm a little a little, a little confused because before we were saying we wanted to you want to make introduce as your amendment. You want to add the amendment before the resolution is introduced. Correct. But now we don't want to do that. But now we don't want to do that. I understand. So I'm just curious then if we go ahead and if you go ahead and vote to introduce the ordinance, how is that property at that point going to be added if you so desire to add? Is that something you'll have to figure out later? Yeah, I think on, 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 we'd have to work with, with council on that. Okay. So does anyone have a are you going to go ahead and make a motion? Mayor, permission to speak? Sure. Uh, for our attorney, just for clarification, once there's an introduction and a second, then it opens it up for people to, on the days to comment again before a vote is taken? Yes, that's right. Kathy. Okay, thank you. So I just want clarification on which one of the two ordinances we're moving first and what is the official number? Okay. And that's the one we're moving first? 
as the one before us right now, Madam Clerk? Yes. Okay. I, I make a motion to move uh, Ordinance 2023-13. Roll call vote. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Before we do that, um, discussion on that. So this is the one that has the street specifically named in it. Yeah. Um, I just want to read her again. I don't what residents were in mind when picking Allen Place or these streets. Um, was the point of picking smaller parts of streets? Um, but based off the Wild West of cannabis, we're sitting here. We still don't have a single dispensary open. So. You know, the fear mongering over the fact that this was out of control in some way, um, you know, is politics at its worst. Uh, no, I'm going to vote no. Anyone else have anything to add? Yes, I, I do, Mayor. Um, I know you keep alluding to some kind of nefarious uh, deal with a resident uh, to put in certain streets and not include certain streets. Again, we picked these areas of town and these streets because they were in a business residential area in our HB zone. It was easy access for anyone who wanted to come into Red Bank and participate in cannabis sales. And they didn't have to drive through, through, throughout town clogging up our streets, not knowing where to go to find these cannabis uh, locations. So this, Mayor, uh, please call the meeting in order. Yeah, the woman is yelling. This is getting ridiculous. Guys, you're killing me. Ridiculous. Now I am. Quiet, please. We're having because this Because this is what, not what you come to a town meeting for. Quiet, please, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, no, he didn't. Come on, he did. Come on. And you're not. So again, we, we picked these for specific reasons. The commercial businesses, we wanted to keep them in the commercial districts and for those reasons. Now, as you can hear through this two and a half hour uh, meeting, there are varying opinions on how we should regulate cannabis, where should we should regulate cannabis, its effect on our population, our children. Everybody has a different opinion and everybody's opinion should be respected. And you can see how difficult it is to come up with legislation that pleases everyone. This regulate, these regulations please no one. They please no one. But we're trying to do something that we can at least move this forward. Again, there has not been one license issued in Red Bank. Not one. With the ordinance that we had. Now, People say, we'll leave it as is. Okay, if we leave it as is, there will still be no licenses issued. There's no process to do it. So we have to do something. And we're, and we're going to do it. Now, we're one of the few municipalities in the area that is even allowing cannabis. A lot of them opted out. They said, I don't want any parts of it. And it seems like, you know, like I, I think back to what my mother did. No good deed goes unpunished. We want it here. We're trying to get it here. And we're being attacked because we're trying to get it here so that it works for everybody. So that it works for everybody. Not just the cannabis industry. Not just the people on whatever street. Everybody. And it's hard. It's very, very difficult. I appreciate everybody who came out and, and voiced their opinions, whether it's, you know, Wall Street. Do we please that, that business and piss off the charter school parents who already think this council doesn't support them? Or, or do we tell the, the charter school parents, well, we're going to ignore you and we're going to let cannabis near your school but not near any other school? Yeah. This is hard work, people. It's difficult work. Never going to please anybody. I, I, we spent countless hours and time going through this. And did we, did we miss a street or did we miss, miss a property? Probably. This is, this is very difficult work. It's very easy to sit back and take pot shots at what is before us, okay? When you're not engaging in the process, 
Everybody on this council knew that the code committee was working on it. It's nothing to send an email to say, hey, uh, at the last meeting, I noticed you said this, but I want you to consider this as you put this together. Very easy to do. Or you can come to the meeting and try to make a big deal out of it. That's not collaborative uh, work in, in trying to run a borough. So I support this, and we can amend it. We can always amend it. Yeah, I know I'm talking a lot, but everybody else talked to. So <laughs> th this is what we were put up here to do, is put forth the amendment that we think will help this town. And, and I'm, I'm proud to support Anyone else have anything to add? Um, yeah, I'm here if I may. Um, I want to compliment um, the members of the code committee for um, the number of hours that they've put into this. Um, I, I think Councilman Ballard makes a, makes a point in that we're not going to please everybody. But I think in, in a good faith effort um, on behalf of this entire governing body, I think by introducing this tonight, and getting, and getting the wheels moving, that we will be able to tweak it a little bit more, um, come up with some corrections to what we learned tonight, um, so that we can at least get something into the pipeline so that licenses can be issued and businesses can open. So, I thank you. Just, I just have a process question too, so, if changes are going to be made to this amendment, it then has to be reintroduced at the next meeting with those changes. Is that how it is that how it works? That's, that's always a possibility, man. Right. It's always a possibility. No, I mean, in other words, we wouldn't be. If you end up deciding you want to make those changes, that's the process, right? It then has to the ordinance has to be reintroduced. The amendment. That's the way the process. Yeah, yeah. Just want to be clear. So it's then it's. Another deal. And then the other question, too, is do you have to make those changes, we approve them, and then it goes to the planning board? Because I know they have to review it as well. Does that, or do they, are they going to review this one and then, I guess that's a, that's a question for the attorney. I think it would depend on what the changes are, and if it's before the second reading, uh, we should be able to make some changes, but then depending on what the changes are, we may have to wait to, to um, approve the ordinance after the second reading longer if we can get approved just at the second reading. And Mayor, if I may, uh, Jack, um, if it's approved and it's submitted to the planning board and the planning board makes additional um, recommendations for changes, um, what's the process for that? It comes back to council and Um, I would want to take a look at what the changes are. We may need to wait um, a certain amount of time after the second reading before it's officially adopted. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to add? Council Member Jackson? Yes. Council Member Yes. Strong no. Yeah, no, I 
Uh, my apologies. So the ordinances, can, the earliest that they could be scheduled for public hearing would be April 26th. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, the, the ordinance uh, 2023-14, it, uh, it is subject to the planning board's review. They do have 30 days to review it. However, they may not take that much time. So if they were to have a meeting and get back to the council prior to the 26th, then we can have um, the public hearing and the adoption scheduled for April 26th. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I just have a question. So, why is it so long from introduction to adoption for these ordinances? I know the planning board because they have to weigh it. But because there has to be a certain amount of time for us to hold the public hearing, and the public hearing has to be advertised at least 10 days prior to uh, the public hearing. Okay, so we just introduced on the 29th of March. Could we have the adoption for at least the licenses on the 12th? Uh, we don't have enough time. It would be right on the 12th. Jack, is that something that, um, no, because I won't be able to get it in the paper in time. This isn't a situation um, where I just have to notify the papers. It actually has to be published, so there won't be enough days. So if you did it, if, if you did it tomorrow, that wouldn't be enough days. I can reach out to the papers tomorrow, but they won't put it in tomorrow's edition. Is that the standard, uh, for attorney, that they have to publish it, yeah. or or we have to notify them? and adoption and it's driven by the, the publication of the notice of the adoption meeting and correct me if I'm wrong or you said 10 days correct but the 10 days is counted from when the newspaper publishes not when the borough notifies is that correct looking Looking at the statute, the 10 days is final passage thereof shall be at least 10 days after the first reading, um, and it needs to be published in its entirety at least once and circulated after the first reading. So I don't think the 10 days necessarily goes from when it's published, it's from when it's first read, but it would need to be published before it's, it's um, read a second time. Done it, my, under, my understanding, it's always been 10 days from days of, day of publication because you 
have to notify the public. Because the public has to see it. Correct. Yeah. But if council is telling us that it's 10 days from adoption, so there's two different things that I'm looking at it further. The, it's 10 days, uh, it can, final passage must be 10 days from the first reading. The publication must be a week prior to the time fixed for a final passage. So that would be seven days. So assuming that, that we reached out quickly and it got into the paper in the next few days, we would probably have enough time before the next council meeting. Councilman Ballard, is there a reason for expediting this? We just, we, we just, we can't do that, sorry. Even though you were ready to answer. Right? <laughs> um, if I can get, if I can get it published by the third latest, then that would be, that would fill the seven days. Seven days. Okay. So we're going to 412. Anyone else have anything to add? Nope, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Have a good meeting night. Meeting is adjourned.